Okay, so we want to have Google Classroom open. We want to be either in the stream or in the class work tab. Okay, either way uh, will work. Okay, we're looking at the properties of Compounds Lab. So if you click on that, okay, it'll show you here for right now just two things. But by the time Thursday rolls around, there'll be the recording from today. Okay, there'll be my lab observations recording of me doing the lab. Okay, so you can confirm your observations with mine. It doesn't take long to watch it. It's probably not a bad idea. Okay, um, and there'll be probably a couple of other things in there. For right now, um, all that's in there is the Google Doc that you're going to fill out and the lab sheet that I'll be working off of on the board. Okay, so the PDF is the one that I'll be working off of. You can't modify that one. Okay, and then yours here that has your name on it. Okay, when you click on that one, it will open up the same thing you'll get for basically every lab we do, okay? You will get the template. Right? So the stuff you have to fill in, you have to fill in the problem. You'll restate the problem in your own words as a question, okay? You'll fill in your manipulated, responding, controlled variables, and reminder, you should explain those choices, okay? Your hypothesis, remember, needs to contain if and then. Okay, we talked about that last week as well. Then you got your list of materials. This list of materials also contains all of the identities of the unknown compounds. All right, so you're just going to see A through J okay, when we go into the lab. But one of those compounds is ammonium nitrate. One of those compounds is paraffin, which is candle wax. Okay, one of them is hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. Okay, one is cobalt two chloride. One's distilled water. Okay, one's copper two sulfate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, all of your compound identities are there in the materials list. When you're doing the analysis, you'll be deciding is comp what is compound A. It's you know hydrogen chloride or whatever it happens to be. All right, uh, and then you've got your data chart here. Okay, so I've built that data chart, but you'll probably need to have either a printed version of that, maybe slightly enlarged, or a hand-drawn version for when we go over to the lab. So make sure that you have that ready for Thursday morning as well. Okay, then you have your analysis. All there is to the analysis, there's no explanation here. All you're doing is filling in whether you think A is ionic or molecular, which test will tell you that? Conductivity, the conductivity test, okay, and what its identity is. So if you think A is water, you write A, molecular, water. Okay, and that would be it. That's all there is to the analysis. Most of the time it's a bit more in depth than that. Then you'll have your conclusion. We talked about that on Friday. Your conclusion, you copy and paste your hypothesis and then you explain why you can accept it or reject it and then your evaluation contains your two sources of error and the ways to fix them right so every time we do a lab you'll get something that looks generally like this all you have to do is fill it in all right questions on that okay so you're going to want to keep that one open i'm going to work off of the actual pdf lab sheet now Right. So the problem we're investigating here has to do with physical properties okay? and whether or not they can tell us a compound's identity. Right? So it's listed on my sheet here as given several unknown samples, how can we classify them as ionic, molecular, acids, and bases in order to find their identity? So you need to say in your restatement of that, in your own words, something about identifying unknown compounds using only physical properties, okay? You need to phrase that somehow in the form of a question in your own words, okay? About using physical properties to identify unknown compounds. I'm just, you might just wanna make a note, that's what you have to do, okay? Again, I'm recording all this so you can come back to it when you're doing your lab report. Should you? Yes. Yes, you definitely should come back to this when you're doing your final lab report. Okay, check and make sure you've done all the things that I've said in class, okay? Because if you miss any of them, you're gonna lose marks, okay? This is a good way to check, did I do all those things? Unless you're making notes as well, which is also a good idea. Okay, for the design, identify your manipulated, responding, and controlled variables, explain your choices. So when you get to this point in the lab report, you need to look and think about, all right, what am I doing in this lab, okay? And what we're doing is we're taking a bunch of unknowns and we're running the same tests on each one. And each time we run those tests on a different material, we should get 
different results. Okay, so that's what I need to run through my head, okay? I'm running the same tests every single time. So that's something that's not changing. I'm doing the same thing every single time. But I'm doing it on a different material. And I'm hoping that as a result of that, I will get different data for each different material. So what am I changing? I'm changing the material in this lab. Okay. That makes it one of the three variables. Okay. I'm changing in this lab the material being tested each time. You're welcome. Okay. You need to explain why that makes it the variable it is. And we said that each time we test a different material, we should be getting, and what are our results? We're looking for the, for the materials what? What kind of properties? It's physical properties. Okay. So since I test something different each time, I should get a different set of physical properties. Like That should almost respond to the fact that I'm changing the material each time. explain why this is that variable. Okay, we need three controlled variables. I gave you one already. Each time I test a new material, I'm testing it in the same way. Okay, so something that is a controlled variable in this lab is the battery of tests, okay, or the series of tests being run. It would hardly be fair to test each unknown in a different way think I'd be able to identify. Okay, you need to list two more controlled variables and explain how they can affect the lab. So I want you to think about some of the tests you're running. Like for example, one of the tests you're running is solubility. What kind of things affect solubility? Temperature affects solubility. Okay. Is that something we should be worried about during the lab? Yes. Okay. Is it something that we are at least somewhat controlling? Okay. So, can that be a controlled variable? Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to explain why. I'm not giving you a third. You have to come up with a third controlled variable on your own. I have given you four out of the five. Okay. You must come up with the fifth control variable, and there's actually many options for you. There'd be lots of different correct answers for that. Now, the big thing to remember here is I haven't really given you much of an explanation for each variable. You need to come up with that yourself as well. Okay? This is the manipulated variable because, remember, in that explanation we're looking for how is it being manipulated, what effect is that going to have. Okay? For the responding variable, What's it, how is it going to change? Why? Controlled variables, they're controlled by doing this because they would do this. Okay. So how am I controlling it and what would it do to the experiment if I didn't? Okay. And again, it's fine if you want to work with your group on these explanations, okay, when it gets to the point where you're working with your group, you guys want to compare notes or talk about how you're going to word that, that's fine, but keep this in mind. I don't want to read the same thing exactly word for word five times. Now, that's going to happen in the procedure because you're putting that together as a group, but every, every other part of this should be somewhat unique, okay? Uh, what, I, what I don't want to see is four identical lab reports coming in for people that were in Okay, I'll, I'll send them back and tell you to do it yourself. Okay, the reason for that is, yes, sure, you sat down, you worked on it together, but when you hand in four identical things, I don't know who did all the work. Okay, and that's not right. All right so everybody needs to hand in their own unique lab report. And guys, I'm smart enough to recognize you just changed the font. 
or the size, okay, or whatever, okay? Like, people think they're really clever when they do crap like that, okay? But I've seen that one before. Wasn't impressed by it the first time or the hundredth time I saw it, okay? Uh, the other part of that is also if you share it with them and like say, oh well just you, you know, just I'll share it with you and you can copy and paste it. I know when you've shared it, because it's my file. Okay? <laughs> so if you try and share it with them, it'll actually ask me if that's okay and the answer is no. Okay? Yeah. All right. I mean you can share it so that when you're working, you know, if you're all working at home, you know, in your different homes and you want to compare what each other's doing, that's fine. Okay, but know that I'll know if you copy it because I can actually go back through your revision history. Okay, that's the other that's the other trick that I use. Okay, because um, oftentimes people will hand something in and I'm like, that really seems familiar. I'll go back in the revision history and there'll be one revision. The lab just mysteriously appears and they were done in one second. Okay? It's really suspicious when someone can type an entire lab report in one second. <laughs> Yeah, so know that because this is my file, I can go back and see all of that stuff, right? In fact, I once watched two people cheat, okay? Because I can actually open up your file and watch what you do. I know that's really creepy, and I won't do that because it's really creepy. But I did it once because I knew I heard these people saying that that's what they were going to do. They went to the computer lab at lunch, and that's exactly what they were doing. And I watched them, and then I put into the chat field. I'm watching it. <laughs> <laughs> so don't make me do that because I felt like triumphant and creepy. <laughs> All right. But it is a good tool. I mean, if you guys are honestly working that way, that's fine. That's great, in fact. I want you to do that. That's why we have it. But if you're just doing it to get out of work, one person's doing work, the other's not. That's not fair. That's not how life works. Or that's how it's supposed to work. Okay. Um, all right, for the procedure, okay, we've already said you and your partner are going to design the experiment that will use those materials. Okay, so I gave you the, the tests you're going to have to run, but that's not all of the procedure. Okay, the procedure is going to need to include things like, um, you know, upon entry to the lab, acquire safety goggles and lab apron, uh, materials can be found at the front of the room, all of that kind of stuff is all part of the procedure. Okay, you need to have that stuff in there. Tell them how much do I put in, when do I do this test, do I do all the observable properties tests at once, then I do all the solubility tests. Now, uh, what you don't want to do is like write that out for each material, because I've had people do that. Like, okay, perform solubility test for sample A, and they tell me how to do the solubility test. And then they write exactly the same thing <laughs> underneath, and they do that for every single, and the report ends up being like 15 pages long. Okay? <laughs> you can simply put repeat for samples B through K or whatever, okay? That's fine. That's not taking a shortcut. Okay, that's just um, okay, make sure that you are conducting a controlled experiment. That is that you obviously do all the tests the same way for each unknown. Okay, And then once you have those observations, which obviously we won't have till the end of the day on Thursday, then you'll be able to perform the analysis and do the conclusion. Okay, Now, we didn't talk about the hypothesis, so we need to go back here and talk about that. Okay. So the hypothesis needs to contain if and then. The if part is the premise that we're working on. Okay? Right now, we think we can identify these compounds because all compounds have physical properties that are recognizable, unique, right? Like no two compounds are going to have exactly the same set of physical properties. Would that be true? Okay, well, I sure hope so because that's the premise this lab operates on. If that's the premise this lab operates on, that is the if part of your hypothesis. Okay? So when you're writing out your hypothesis, your if part needs to talk about how all compounds have unique physical properties. If that's true, okay, so that's kind of how it's going to go. If all things blah, blah, blah. Okay, you have to put that in your own words. Okay. Um, then we talk about the and part. Okay. The and part is a brief description of the experiment. In this experiment, we're performing tests to, to discover those physical properties. And you might want to list them. Okay. So observable, solubility, con aqueous conductivity, and pH. 
Okay, put that somewhere in the end part. Those are the tests we're running. The then part of a hypothesis is going to predict our results or what we'll be able to do. What are we hoping we're going to be able to do? Identify them. Okay? So in the then part, we should talk about then, okay, what are our results going to be? Each compound's data will be different, meaning something like that. And that will allow the, the compound to be identified. Something like that's the nature of it. Okay? Again, it's got to be in your own words, but that's what we're looking for. Okay? The premise is everything's got unique physical properties. The end part is the tests we're running to confirm or to prove that. The then part is what are we going to get the results and how will they help us? Okay, that's what needs to go in there. All right, that's the pre lab stuff. Thursday, what I want to be able to see in everybody's file is problem, variables, hypothesis, procedure, and then I've already put the data chart in there, so you don't even have to do that. Okay? So those are the things I want to see. Those things need to be done for Thursday morning. So we can go across the hall and do the lab. Okay? The more the more time that we the more stuff we get done in here before the lab, the more time we have to do the lab. Okay, we can do lab, come back, and maybe even have a bit of time for you to talk with your group about, okay, what did you think substance A was? What did you think substance B was? Okay, and do all that kind of stuff. All right. So you got about four minutes left here. Okay, so you might want to um, maybe kind of figure out who you might want to work with in the lab, try and include everybody. Okay, uh, group sizes, guys. Okay, five. Okay. Maximum group size, actually ideal group size, five, okay? Because we only have so many lab stations. So if you can get into groups of five or maybe even six, that would be awesome, okay? Um, just make sure everybody's included. If you end up without a group, let me know. I'll find a group for you, okay? Um, but let's do that right now. And once you've decided on your group, okay, then you can put your Chromebooks back in the cart in the appropriately numbered slot. Okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs>